for Target Acquired, the whole thing is about forgiveness, not letting your past past define your future. Mm -hmm. So I would say I want them to take away those lessons and the fact that Jesus loves them no matter what they've done in their past. This is Carol McLeod. I'm your host on the Significant Women Podcast. I'm so excited about today's episode. I met Lynette Eason, I don't know, about 10 or 12 years ago at a writer's conference. And right away, I knew I had met an interesting, riveting person. Lynette writes those books that keep you on the edge of your seat. They keep you up at night. They keep your heart pounding. Honestly, I've had to take my blood pressure medicine when I read one of Lynette Eason's books. Her books are page turners where you wonder what's going to happen next. Lynette Eason is a best-selling author known for her gripping suspense novels that keep readers hooked from start to finish. With over 50 books, that's right, I said 50, five zero books to her name, Lynette has mastered the art of combining pulse, pounding fiction with deep emotional and faith themes. Her stories often explore the resilience of the human spirit and the power of faith in the face of danger. I can't wait for you to lean in and listen to this episode of the Significant Women podcast with my guest, Lynette Eason. Well, I'm here with my friend, Lynette Eason, today. And Lynette, I think that you and I met maybe 10 years ago at a writer's conference. Does does that sound about right to you? That sounds about right. 10 years sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. And I I was amazed at you, first of all, because you are a best-selling author and who you know, when you go to a writer's conference, that's what that's who we all want to be. But also because of the genre in which you write, which to me is so fascinating. I want to know how your brain works, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Because first, I just want to talk about Lynette and and your life and what you've been through and what's what's happening in your life. So let's go back to your childhood, Lynette. Can you can you go back there when you were just a little girl and? When you were a little girl, like, what was your favorite thing to do? Ride a bike, mm-hmm. cook, read. What What was your favorite thing to do? You know, that's so funny. Um, I I have a hard time going back to my childhood and thinking about it because I'm so forward thinking. But one of my favorite things to do as a kid was we had family vacations and family vacations were just the bomb for us. We loved it. We went to the lake, the beach, the mountains. We took a cross-country road trip. Um, you know, we were always doing something. And I think that just um, put a love in my heart for travel. You know, family vacations really are the best and the way it bonds a family together. Um, you know, when you were a little girl, because you are forward thinking, and, and you dreamt about the future, what did you want to be? What did you want to do when you grew up? I wanted to be a pediatrician. Really? (laughs) (laughs) I remember that vividly. I just wanted to be a pediatrician. And then I got to high school math. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, uh, seriously, I actually really like math. But um, I I don't know. You know, as you grow and your interests change and your goals change. um, And I, I do remember in eighth grade trying to write a book. And I, I had my little, you know, spiral notebook where I would write down ideas for a story. And it was based on a, another story that I had read. So I was kind of t- making it my own, not plagiarizing, of course, but, but taking the idea and trying to make it my own. And, and that's the first time I remember trying to write a book and thinking, this is way too hard. I am never trying this again. And so, <laughs> and so from there, you know, um, I don't know. Um, Yeah, I just kind of morphed into learning how to write and that kind of stuff. And um, I wanted to be a pediatrician and I ended up being a writer. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? (laughs) God knew. God God, knew. (laughs) Yeah. He had the days of your life um, ordered for you. So when you were a little girl, Annette, did, did you read? Were you a reader? Oh, yes. 
I constantly had my nose in a book. I would rather read than eat or do anything else. And my mom was the same way. And I'm pretty sure that's where I got it from. Um, And so, yes, we were at the library, um, you know, the bookmobile that came to our neighborhood. And it was always Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys and the the Bobsy Twins and the Boxcar Children. (laughs) I'm dating myself totally, I know, but... um, those were those were the books that I was reading back then. Yeah. And Agatha Christie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think our lives, our trajectory was sort of um, side by side because <laughs> all those books oh, painted my childhood. All of those books did. Yeah. But yeah. Lynette, now tell us about your faith journey. You're, you're a committed believer to Jesus Christ. And have you always known the Lord? When, just talk to us about your faith journey. Yeah, you know, I I am one of those um, kids who grew up in a Christian home with Christian parents. So, so blessed. I, I just, you know, feel so undeserving of such blessing, you know. But to have um, Christian parents who raised me in the church, who raised me in the Word. Um, and at, I was eight years old when I was baptized um, and with the profession of of faith. And I was, um, but it wasn't until I got to college and my freshman year of college, I was sitting in a revival um, meeting at a church and I was like, I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. I know the Lord. I love the Lord, but I just really needed to rededicate it. And so that's when I really feel like I started um, understanding what being a Christian and being a believer and and um, and and being a disciple of Christ was really all about. So, did you ever go through a time of out and out rebellion or even quiet questioning when it came oh, to your sure. faith? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, I think we almost all do that at some point. Um, as you know, my my life wasn't going the way I thought. I had it all planned out in my head, <laughs> and um, I, I was never outright rebellious. But it was more of a God. I don't get this. If you really loved me, would all this be happening? If you if you were real, if if you're really there, why can't I see whatever you know? Um, and then. There was a, a lady in my parents' church, the church that I grew up in, but I wasn't going there anymore. I had moved on. Um, but there was a lady in the church, and she was murdered in a terrible, terrible way by somebody that she had hired to do yard work for her. Um, it was it was really, I won't go into the details, but it was it was really a terrible thing. And that just really threw me. Like, I... It just completely threw me. Well, I went to her um, funeral memorial service, and the pastor, my my childhood pastor, the pastor who baptized me, said something I'll never forget. He said, "If if our faith is unable to be tested, it's unable to be trusted. And I was like, that just hit me. Um, This has been years ago. And, um, and I just have, li- have lived by that ever since. I want to be able to trust my faith. I want to be able to trust God. I want, and, and I was like, and, and tests are going to come and trials are going to come. But by leaning on that faith and having that solid foundation, you might shake me a little bit, but you're not going to break me and God or my faith. And so, and that's where I, that's basically my faith journey right there. Wow. Yeah. You know, often uh, God uses tragedy to refine us, to yes. really make our faith pure gold. Um, I've known in my life that when hard things come my way, I can either run toward the Lord or run away from Him. It's my choice. Yeah. Um, so God used that tragedy to really refine your faith and, and bring you yeah. to a higher that place of commitment. Yeah. 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 That that was that was the main thing. I mean, of course, obviously there have been other trials and <laughs> tribulations throughout sure. uh, the past few years. But that that's the one thing where I can look back and say that's where I decided I was a Christian. Uh-huh. 
and that, but that's where I decided this is, this is real. This is my, this, I'm leaning on this and I am trusting what he says. And no matter what happens. Yeah. I, I think that old spiritual song, I shall not be moved, just like I a tree am. planted <laughs> by the water. This girl's Absolutely. not going to be moved. Yeah. Right, um, right, yes. Well, now, Lynette, let's fast forward to today. What does a day in the life of Lynette Eason look like? Oh, gosh, it's never the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um it really, you know, I just kind of take it one day at a time at this point in life. I have, you know, had a, I had a daughter in law school. She just graduated. I took the bar and waiting to hear if she passed. She's going to Uganda in September to practice law there in the prison system. And that's a whole long story. I have a son who just graduated college who's, who's living at home and getting ready to move out. And so, Honestly, we have our house on the market. We're getting ready to sell. So in between, so packing is what my life looks like <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> but so when I first get up in the morning, it's time with Jesus, time with just to kind of go, oh, okay, all right, let's get the day. What's this day going to look like? Yeah. And um, then I just open up my laptop and I start working. I get as much writing done as possible because I never know what's going to happen. Um, and I need to get my words in on this story for this book that's due September 2nd. <laughs> Nothing like a little panic writing going on at the moment. Um, and and then, you know, my husband is flying in from, he's been in Malawi, Africa, preaching and uh, doing ministry there for the past 10 days. And he's flying in today. And so I'm going to, put everything on hold and, and go meet him for lunch and catch up. And <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, I cannot give you a structured, like what my day looks like on a daily basis is just different every day. Um, you know, I have older parents and who, who live on the other side of town that I have to check on. And, you know, it's just, there is no schedule. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's all good. It's all riveting. It's all wonderful. So um, yes. now I want to talk about your writing career, Lynette. Okay. Th this is amazing to me. You write in a genre, a very unique, specific bookshelf is yours. Um, yes. You write in the romantic suspense genre. And I've heard our friend Michelle Cox say before, nobody wants to room with you at writer's retreats because... <laughs> We really don't know Michelle what's going to happen. Made that up. <laughs> she Michelle did. just doesn't want to know. I'm she did. Kidding. She made it up. We we would all room with you. It's not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. But this hmm. romantic suspense genre, what led you to that, Lynette? Well, like I said a little bit earlier, all the books that I read, I loved that every single one of them had a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they went through these terrible, terrible things, um, and you know, the bad guy always was caught, and there was justice for the victim, and um, and I just really admired the the um, the people that made that possible. And you know, that was law enforcement. It was well with Nancy Drew. It was a couple of teenagers, but you know. <laughs> In the real world, um, <laughs> uh, you know, it was the law enforcement. It was um, just the the fact that um, they were brought to justice and had a happy ending. And you know, when you think about it, the Bible has a happy ending. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's bad guys and there's um, all kinds of things that happen, and there's there's heroes and heroines in the Bible, and there's um, you know, and, and we're fighting for justice and and God, of course, is the ultimate judge and, and will bring the ultimate justice for his people. And I mean, I am in no way comparing my books to the Bible, but I'm just saying, you know, that's what inspired me. I just I, I love this. And um I I I love the puzzle of writing a a mystery and hiding all of these little things that have to come to light over the course of the story to make the reader go, oh, I never saw that coming, you know, yeah. and, um, yeah. and there's justice and there's a happy ending and there's a thread of romance in them. And I, I, I love romance and, um, actually my husband's more romantic than I am, but, um, I, I really like the suspense part and just, that I have to turn the page to find out what happens next. 
So your newest book just came out is titled Target Acquired, and it's actually the second book in a series. So talk to us about the series, what's happening, and what goes on in this new book, Target Acquired. Okay, so it it is the second book. Double Take was the first one, and it came out in January, and that's when I did the big cross-country tour thing, which was a lot of fun, by the way. And um, so Target Acquired is the second book. It's Cole and Kinsey's story. They they show up in the first book. And um, Kinsey is a SWAT medic, and she has worked very hard to get on the SWAT team um, for various reasons. And Cole is on the SWAT team, but he's also a detective. And so if you know anything about law enforcement, you know that like being on SWAT is extra. So first and foremost, you're a detective, you're doing cases, you're doing that kind of thing. And then there's a call you have trained, you're on this team. And when there's a call, you go out and you are on the SWAT team. And then when you come back, you go back to your cases. So, um, so this story is their story. And, Somebody doesn't want Kinsey on the SWAT team, it looks like. And so, you know, it looks like they're going to try to get her off the team, um, you know, and do whatever it takes to uh, get rid of her because you have to read the book to find out why. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But it's also a story of faith uh, and trusting God and deciding um, whether or not um, they're going to trust that he is good, he is faithful, and he will get them through this um, or not. So so it does have a little bit of that whole, the whole faith element. I, I'm not real heavy on that because we don't go around, you know, bashing our neighbors over the head with, you know, our faith. We live our lives to be an example, to make people go, oh, what's different about her? What What is it that she has that I don't have? Um, and then, and then hopefully they will ask us, we build those relationships and they'll say, Hey, why do you respond this way to this situation? And and then you can say, Hey, well, it's because, and, um, you have that moment to share your faith with that person. And that's what I want in my books. It's, it's, it's not that I'm light on the faith element. Um, I think, I think sometimes my book, some books are lighter than others. It just depends on the story and what the story calls for. But the faith element is always in the stories because I can't write a book without Jesus in it. I just, I can't. I, I, my life is, he, he's in my life. And it's just, I want him to permeate everything I do. And I want people to see that. So Lynette, how many books have you written now? I think I'm at, I think I'm at 60 Seven. Wow. So you write more than one book a year? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I was doing two books a year f- for Ravel for a long time, and then I was writing two to three books a year for Love Inspired at the same time. So I was writing between four and five books a year. Um, I don't do that anymore because my brain no longer can do it. <laughs> I'm older now, and my brain is like, we're done. <laughs> so. <laughs> and so it's two books a year plus a novella. This year it's it's two books and two novellas. Um and so yeah. So um again, romantic suspense is your genre that you write in. And you know, I'm a little house on the prairie girl. <laughs> I yeah. I just, I don't like a lot of conflict. I, I like everything to be smooth sailing. But <laughs> when I met you, Lynette, I, I started reading your books. I, I haven't read all 60 something, but I've read a very good number of them. And they're captivating. They hook you in. So I just want to encourage my listeners, even if you think, oh yeah, romantic suspense, you know, I'm not that girl. Oh, you might be that girl. <laughs> because <laughs> thank you. <laughs> because the books are captivating. So Lynette, how do you come up with your plot? Because they're all pretty intense. Uh, do you uh, lay in bed at night and think about it? Like how, or do they just magically yeah. appear in your brain? <laughs> okay, so... um you know, I have a group of people that are my squad, so okay. to speak, and we are the brainstorming team. And so I, I actually have two groups. And and so what I do is if I need to, usually I can just kind of come up with the characters and the idea, but, but every once in a while you just need somebody else's input. And so I can just shoot an email and say, hey, this is what I got. Send them my paragraph and say, that's all I got. 
throw me your ideas. What's happening? What's your background? You know, I need characterization. I need um, whatever, family and ex, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, you know, whatever. So shoot me that. And, and I'll get a bunch of responses. And then I just take that and I go, oh, I can use this. Or I can look at that and go, nope, I don't like any of that. But you gave me an idea and it's a little spark something that I can take it and run with it. And another great brainstorming partner, believe it or not, is (laughs) ChatGPT. I can put in an idea, like a paragraph and say, um, give me an idea for a a story for whatever, blah, 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 blah. And it will just give me idea after idea. And honestly, it's it's just like a person and it's scary and it's wonderful all at the same time. And so if I get stuck and I'm working on a story at 2 a.m. and I don't want to wake any of my friends up because I want to keep them as friends, (laughs) um, (laughs) I can just jump on um, AI and I can 100% of the time will have something that I can work with by the time I finish putting it all in. And so it's, it's truly amazing. And it's here to stay. AI is it's not evil. Uh, I mean, it can be just right. like anything else, but mm-hmm. um, it will. I don't recommend trying to let it write your books because it writes terrible. But for brainstorming, it's great. So. Oh, I love that. That is that's fascinating. Well, maybe one of your next books will be about AI. <laughs> well, you know, Colleen Coble and Rick Acker have one coming out, and it says, "Tell me something I don't know," and it says, "I think I was murdered," oh. and that's their that's their their tagline. And so, okay, plug for Colleen and Rick. You're welcome. Yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's really good. I wish I thought of that. I know. But, yeah. I know. Well, we'll get back to my conversation with Lynette in just a minute, but I wanted to take a moment and tell you about some of the things that are happening behind the scenes at Carol McLeod Ministries. My friend, we are intent on fanning the flame of faith in the hearts and lives of people around the world. We will not pause. We will not be silent. We will not stop our mission to make hell smaller and heaven bigger. One of the ways we do that is I teach the Word of God to people in Pakistan once a month. Some of these people have never heard the name Jesus before the moment when I come on a screen by the magic of technology and teach people in remote villages about who Jesus is and what He can do. And then for everyone who accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior that day, we give them a free copy of the Bible in their own language and our ministry provides that resource. Another thing that we do is we have thousands of copies of my Bible study in prisons all across America. It is my delight to donate copies of my books, of books that I've written to women who are incarcerated in order to strengthen their faith and give them the hope of living a godly life. As you know, we have this incredible podcast, the Significant Women Podcast, and I speak at events large and small across America. Oh, one more thing. Have you discovered version yet? It's the little brown Bible app on your smartphone. I have about 30 devotionals on version downloaded by over 4 million people around the world. We are intent on changing the world in which we live for the glory of God. Would you like to join me on this journey? It could be something as small as writing a review on Amazon or on goodreads.com. It could be buying one of my books to give to some of your friends, encouraging your pastor's wife to do one of my Bible studies at your church. You can support this ministry in so many ways. It might be sharing this podcast with a friend. That encourages us as well. Or the Holy Spirit might be tugging on your heart to become a monthly donor of Carol McLeod Ministries. How can you do that? You can go to my website, carolmcleodministries.com and click on donate. You can decide whether you wanna give a one-time gift or become a monthly donor. 
I just want to tell you, some of our monthly donors give $5 a month, and we love them so much. We're so thankful for them. Some of our monthly donors give hundreds of dollars every month, and we're thankful for them as well. The best way you can support this ministry is by praying for us. So please do that. Now let's get back to my conversation with Lynette Eason. Okay, let's review for a minute. You okay. you were a church girl, just yes. raised to love the Lord, serve the Lord, um, rededicated your life. You you never were involved in anything um, way out there, any huge sins in life, and yet you write these romantic suspense books. So. Lynette, do you have to do a lot of research? Like, do you watch a lot of whodunit, um, mystery shows on TV? What What does research um, versus imagination look like as you write a book? I, okay, so um, definitely research. Now, keep in mind, I've been doing this for about 20 years now. And all of the, re- I have learned so much over the years about law enforcement and different law enforcement agencies, FBI, ATF, CIA, it's just, um, but the really cool thing is God has put people in my life at exactly the right time in the right place that is no doubt in my mind that these people are gifts from him. (laughs) And so, um, for example, my very first book with Ravel was going to come out in 2010. And um, I was at a writer's conference and I needed somebody with with law enforcement background to read this. And my, my background is teaching. My, I don't have a law enforcement background. I just love mysteries like we had we talked about. And so I was sitting in the lobby at this writer's conference and this uh, we were just chatting. There were several of us chatting and this man comes and sits down next to me and, hey, I'm Wayne. And, you know, we introduce ourselves and he talks a little bit and, and I'm like, well, what are, what are you doing here? And he's like, well, not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said, I, I'm writing a book, but, you know, I'm just kind of figuring all this out. He'd never been before. And and he's like, well, what do you write? And I told him romantic suspense and uh, that kind of thing. And then it's like, well, um, if you ever need, a, you know, any feedback on some law enforcement, I can help you out with that. And I was what? like, oh, really? What do you do? He said, like, I'm a retired FBI agent. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, hello. Well, I'll just let you know, God put you in that seat for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, he read that first book, gave me lots of feedback. He's read every book since. And oh so, my. and then from him, I um, was got to know another woman who they worked with, who was also um, an FBI, former FBI agent. She was actually um, uh, a SAC, a special agent in charge, a supervisory special agent. I mean, she was like, up there on the chain. And she and I have become really, really good friends. And so any law enforcement stuff that I need, I have these two people to go to. And then um, I've been to the Writers Police Academy, which is, Google it, it's an amazing thing where you go and you just learn all about the different um, type of agencies that um, are, you know, that law enforcement has. Yeah. You can learn how to defuse a bomb. You can learn about diving. <laughs> and, I mean, it's just, uh, you learn about autopsies and all this. It's, it's not a Christian conference by any stretch of the imagination. So you have to have your filters, but it's really, really an amazing learning opportunity and things, places, conferences like Killer Nashville and BoucherCon and Inter- uh, the Thriller Fest. And I mean, just, at ACFW and Blue Ridge. I mean, you just, just all of these professionals at a lot of these conferences, and they're there because they want to help you write your story. And they're there because they want you to get it right, because you're talking about that, what they love, their passion, their career, and they want it represented well and done right. So they are more than willing to um, give you feedback and that kind of thing. So that's the kind of research I, I've done. I'm, you know, I'd really try to go all in and, and get it right because I'm not saying everything I write is perfect. I'm not saying I don't take a little bit of author licensure um, occasionally, but, but for the most part, my stuff is, is accurate. Okay. So your new book, Target Acquired is the title. Do you come up with the title first and then the storyline? Or do you write the story and say, oh, this is the title for that book? Well, okay. So I, I, I come up with titles, but they're usually changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because when I submit the proposal, I, have, I, I do four book proposals to the publisher and I 
I I write the summary of what I kind of think it's going to play out to be. Um, and then I give it a title. I, at some point, I was just doing book one, book two, book three, book four. You guys are going to title it anyway. Go for it. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But um, but they did keep they did keep the title for book three in this series that I came up with. It was about an arsonist, and I called it Serial Burn, and they cut that. So. What What's the name of Serial Burn? Serial Burn. Oh mm-hmm. wow. Okay. And when that when is that book coming out, Lynette? That comes out in January of 2025. And then Final Approach um, is the one that I'm working on right now. It's about a U.S. Uh, about an air marshal, um, and it comes out in August of 2025. Wow, you're a busy girl. Love oh, it. Very. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, so. so just one more question about your new book, Target Acquired. Um, every book comes with a life lesson or a moral or a virtue in it. What What is the one thing that you hope readers will grow in, in life based on reading this book? You know, um, for Target Acquired, um, forgiveness mm. is so key to um, addressing, I, how do I want to put it? It, it? The whole thing is about forgiveness, not letting your past, past define your future. Mm-hmm. And um, so I would say I want them to take away those lessons and the fact that Jesus loves them no matter what they've done in their past and that nobody is irredeemable. Yeah. And, um, and so that's, that's pretty much what this story, story is about. Yeah. Mm, I love it. So simple yet so profound. So Lynette, do you have a favorite scripture that has just guided you throughout life? Or maybe it's a new one that's just stirring in your heart. Share with us a scripture I, today. I do. Yeah. I do. Um, I, I love so many scriptures. There's so many. And, and But the one that I choose to use when I sign my books, I always sign it. I mean, something like enjoy the story, enjoy the adventure, and I sign my name, and then I put Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, mm. and um, you know, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, and that's to me. So many people need to hear that. That's just you know, John three sixteen is is a close second for me, but but I just love that. Um, God plainly says, I have a plan for you. No, you're not an accident. No matter the, your birth situation, how you came into this world, you are not an accident. Yeah. And um, God has a plan for you. And I just, I love that so much. Amen. Amen. And when I think of those two verses juxtaposed, Lynette, the reason we have a future and a hope is because of John 3.16. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's because God so loved the world that he gave his only yes. son. Um, and believing in him, in him. Yeah. Is yeah, what gives us that future. Yeah. So, Lynette, as you know, the name of my podcast is Significant Women. And I, I wondered who have been the significant women in your life. Um, for some people, it's somebody they've never met. Like for me, it's Ruth Bell Graham, um, Elizabeth Elliot. But who have been the yeah. significant women in your life? Um, well, so growing up, obviously my mom and my grandmother and both grandparents, both grandmothers really. Um, and just, I've been so blessed to have so many women speak into my life, to speak truth in my life, and to show me what it means to be a godly woman. Um, and so that's just that's so important for the younger generation coming up to have those mentors and just godly women that will speak into their lives. And um, obviously, my my writing mentors and you know, Dee Henderson, Gail Roper, and Terry Blackstock. Brandel and Colin. I mean, all these people that I was reading and and just um, watching and, you know, just thinking, you know, oh, man, they're so cool. I want to do that. And and uh, Dee Henderson was my main writing mentor and who also uh, is a godly woman. And so that was that was amazing. She was such an encouragement. Um, you know, Sunday school teachers, Sunday school teachers are 
probably <laughs> the most unappreciated people in church, maybe. I don't know, because they're just so, so important, especially when they're you're teaching children and in those formative years. And you just you have their little hearts in your hands. And, you know, it's so important. And I've had some really, really wonderful small group uh, Sunday school teachers and, and church women mm-hmm. um, who have spoken into my life. So I've just been so fortunate. God has so blessed me. And I don't take it for granted because I have friends and and family even who who have not had those kind of blessings. And um and so I don't take it for granted. I'm just very grateful for that and, and want to pass that on and pay it forward as well. That's so. right. That's right. We're, we yeah. are in that season of life now, Lynette, where we're passing on what we have learned. Um, yes. So the name of your new book is Target Acquired. And where can my listeners connect with you? Where are your books available? Tell us all the things. Okay, so my books are pretty much across uh, available across any platform where you can buy a book. Yeah, uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. I, I love to support local Christian bookstores. If you have one, they're few and far between these days. But if you have a local Christian bookstore, please, please go there and support them. Otherwise, um, CBD yeah. Dot com is wonderful. Um, Baker Bookhouse always has my books 40% off and free shipping. So if you buy them, the hard copy, I'm not talking about the Kindle, the hard copy, if you want a hard copy and you buy it through Baker Bookhouse, you get it 40% off is in pre-ordered and then they ship it out to arrive in your inbox uh, in your mailbox on uh, the day it releases and it's free shipping. So it's a really good deal. And yeah. I really love supporting Baker Bick House just because, you know, I write for Baker and, yeah. and, and they're a great company and a great uh, bookstore. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much anywhere. And I really, if you, if you're interested, please join my newsletter um, sign up for my newsletter, lynetteason.com, and just scroll down and click it, and you get a free read if you sign up. It's a free short story. I love it. Oh, Lynette, thank you so much. I've known you for so many years, but today it's been wonderful to to dig into the the minds of your heart and um, just the treasure that is you. So thanks for spending time with me today. And before we go, would you pray for my listeners? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. Oh, yes, you're I would welcome. love to pray. Okay. Yes. Let's thank pray. You. Okay. All right. Dear, gracious, and loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for uh, Carol's ministry and the ladies that work with her and who serve you. Thank you for this opportunity to share part of my story, a story that you're still writing. Uh, in all of our lives. Thank you for the ladies who listen to this and can relate, who struggle to trust that you've got it all under control, because you do, Lord, and we thank you for this. Thank you for picking us up when we land on our faces, for dusting us off and encouraging us to try again. Thank you for all you do, for your promises, your faithfulness, even when it looks like everything may be falling apart. Um, Thank you for your protection in all things when we can't see it except in hindsight. I pray that you bless each person listening and wrap them in peace and comfort of your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thanks, Lynette. Well, if you've been encouraged by today's episode, would you take just a minute and leave a rating or review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on? That would mean the world to us. And don't forget, we have an app for your smartphone. Just go to the app store on your phone and do a search for Carol McLeod Ministries. You can buy a book there. You can join a Bible study. You can read a devotional. You can leave a prayer request. It's all right there on our app. Now, I want you to connect with Lynette Eason. Her website is lynetteason.com and I will have the link in the show notes. L-Y-N-E-T-T-E-E-A-S-O-N.com. You can also connect with her on social media. I know that she'd love to hear from you and say, hey, Lynette, I heard you on Carol's podcast. I loved hearing what you had to say and I bought one of your books as well. Don't forget to grab Lynette's latest book, Target Acquired, to add to your personal library. 
You know, I always like to end with just a a brief reference to Scripture. It's, It's the Word of God that's going to sustain us and anchor us through all the storms in life. So today we're going to read together Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. My friend, God has a plan. He has a plan for your life. He's always had a plan. And when it seems like your life is upended, God is not surprised. He's standing beside you, ready to get your life back on track again. Just take hold of His hand today and say, Jesus, I need you. I want you. I can't do this life without you. Jesus, I want your plans for my life more than I want my plans for my life. God has always had a plan for His people. You are not forgotten. So cling to Him, cling to His Word, and He will take such good care of you. I hope that you'll join me next time on the Significant Women Podcast.